Today I want to look at power sets and Cartesian product of sets, two concepts that really kind of round out your ideas of basic set theory. So let's get into it. All right, so here we have an example where we'll let A, B, and C be our set, capital A, and we want to find uh, the script P means power set. And what the power set is, so if I write this script P, that means the set of all possible subsets of A. Okay, so when I want to find if A, B, and C is my set, then the power set of A is going to be, well, I just got to consider all subsets. Now, the thing is, you got to, here's the one everyone forgets, is we have to include the empty set as well. Okay, so my sets include, uh, or my subsets, I have the empty set. And the way I like to order this is I think of, first of all, all, all the subsets of cardinality zero, that's a subset, I mean, that's the empty set. Then I start thinking all the subsets of cardinality one. So don't write A because A is an element. The elements of the power set are sets themselves. So here I have the set with only one thing in it, A. I have the set with only one thing in it, B. The set with only one thing in it, C. Okay, then I start thinking, all right, that's the sets of cardinality one. Now I need to go to cardinality two. So I could do uh, AB, AC, BC. And now remember, with sets, the order doesn't matter. So CA, CB, I've already included those in here. So these are the only sets of cardinality two, or subsets of A of cardinality two. Lastly, I have the set A itself, the set, subsets of cardinality three. And technically, a set is considered a subset of itself. And so there's a power set of A. Um, notice that we have how many things? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could have predicted that earlier if I had known how many things are in the cardinality of a power set. Um, this is a good thing to try to figure out on your own, but the power set has a cardinality of two to the power of whatever the cardinality of A is. So here I had A had three things in it, so I knew the power set would be two cubed eight elements. All right, so now I want to look at um, the power set of this set. Uh, well, it's got some weird looking stuff in it, so we need to kind of figure out how many things are in our set. Maybe we can deduce the cardinality of our power set here. So I'm looking at my set. Um, I have this thing, the one. The one is in a set itself, but that doesn't matter. It's an element in my set. So that's one element. The number two is an element. And then the set one, two is an element. So I have three things, which means my power set would have to have two cubed eight elements in it. Okay, so let's do, let's call this guy for shorthand, let's call this guy B. So then the power set of B is going to be, don't forget, we always have the empty set. And then I think about my, my sets of cardinality one. So how about one, two, oops, I got to be careful, right? I got to list these as sets, not elements themselves. So this is the set, the subset that has the set of one in it. Okay, it can be kind of confusing. We have the uh, subset of just two, and then we have the subset that has the set one, two in it. So there's my subsets of cardinality one. Now I need to go to my subsets of cardinality two. So that could be set one, two, set one, set one, two, or the set two, one, two. And then lastly, we have the subset of it, which is the set itself. So I'll just copy down what I have there. The subset of one, two, and then the set one, two, that subset together is my last set. And then I have one more brace <laughs> and, uh, it can be kind of confusing with all these braces. So look, we have one element, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight elements. The power set, since the set only had three things in it, the power set would have three. That's power sets. The other thing I want to show you is Cartesian product of sets. So this time I have um, A is pi E zero and B is zero one. And I have this A, looks like multiplication B. Okay, now one thing this is not is multiplication. Um, I have students try to do stuff like pi times zero and pi times one. 
That's not right. That's not how this works. The best way to think about this is more like a grid. Okay, so I'm going to have um, a grid like this. Here's A, here's B. And uh, so A, I had pi, E, and 0. And in B, I need a little more room here, at 0, 1. All right, so there's B. And uh, so in my grid, what I'm putting in my in the cells of this table um, is an ordered pair where the first thing comes from A and the second thing comes from B. So for example, this first one is pi 0. This second one is E 0. And the last one here is 0, 0 because the first part comes from A, the second part comes from B. So for the second row I have pi 1, E1, 0, 1, like that. Now, that's a good illustration of what we mean by Cartesian product. It probably is worth writing out what we mean by Cartesian product. So if I write A cross B, I'm talking about in set builder notation, the set of ordered pairs, A, B, and the order does matter. The first thing comes from A, the second thing comes from B, uh, where A is from A and little b is from B. That's what we mean by Cartesian product. And it's kind of like um, adding a dimension to my set, right? We turn a set into an array, for example. A cross B, we went from just pi, or pi E zero to these ordered pairs, pi zero, pi one. And I guess we should really write it here like that, pi zero, E zero, and so on. So my, my A cross B looks like that. So if I do A cross A, I'm not going to write it in, as a, in a grid, but I got to think, um, well, how many things are going to be in this set? I have A has three things in it. A has three things in it. So if I'm doing ordered pairs, I'm going to have three times three, nine things in my cardinality. So here, uh, my first one is going to be pi pi, right? Because according to my definition, the first thing comes from A, and now the second thing's got to come from A as well. So I have pi pi, pi e, pi zero, and then I move on to e being my first coordinate, e pi. But wait, wait, pi e and e pi, are those different? Yes, because these are ordered pairs. The order does matter in this context. So I have e pi, e e, e zero, and then lastly, zero pi, 0e, zero, 0, 0. Okay. Now, um, you're thinking ordered pairs, that sounds pretty familiar because um, we, we did stuff like that in uh, the real numbers. Yeah, we had like a, an x and a y, and so we have a coordinate x, y. Uh, the reason we, c we can do ordered pairs like this is because this whole system is, is actually r cross r. It's a Cartesian product of the real numbers by the real numbers. So sometimes we call R squared. We call this a Cartesian plane. And these Cartesian coordinates are actually just uh, Cartesian products of the reals and the reals. Okay, part C I'm not going to do because uh, AV listed like that doesn't really make sense to us. Um, so let's go to this second part and see if we can figure this out. This is more Cartesian product stuff. Um, here I want 0, 1 cross 0, 1. Now what that means is uh, when I have the set 0, 1, I'm talking about all the uh, real numbers where that real number comes somewhere between 0 and 1. Or on my number line, here's 0, here's 1. We're talking about all this. So if I'm saying 0, 1 cross 0, 1, that means my x coordinate comes from the interval 0, 1, and my y coordinate comes from the, zero, uh, the interval 0, 1. So if I'm sketching like on a you know, on a coordinate system, okay, we said my x coordinates have to come from like 0, 1, like this, and my y coordinates come from 0, 1, like that too. So for example, if I pick this number here, let's say that's uh, 1 half, 1 half, 1 half, 1 half will be in this set because the x coordinate is between 0 and 1 and the y coordinate is between 0 and 1 as well, okay? So if I collect all of those coordinates together, what do I get? Um, I actually get a unit square, right? Because anything in this square will have a coordinate 
whose x coordinate is between 0 and 1, and whose y coordinate is also between 0 and 1. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. All right, so uh, for part B, and here we do mean the natural numbers. Um, let me see. If I am trying to graph this, let's, let me think what this means. This means my x coordinate has to be a natural number, and my y coordinate can be an integer. Okay, um, so what are the what are the natural numbers look like on these grids? Well, let's see. So zero is not a natural number, despite what some may tell you. And uh, one is, two is, three is, four, etc. Um, in the y direction, I'm allowed to have uh, one, two, three, etc. I have to get all those, but I also get zero, like negative one, and so on. So um, if I collect all those together, what do I end up with? Well, I think this point's okay, right? Because that's one, three. The x coordinate is a natural number. The y coordinate is an integer. And uh, that one's okay, and, and so on. And actually, I just get this grid of dots. Um, and it can extend into the first quadrant, but also dip down to the fourth quadrant because my y coordinate is allowed to be a negative number Right, so um, I don't give myself a lot of room here, but um, like for example, if I'm down here at negative three, that's okay. The point three negative three satisfies my x coordinate being a natural number, my y coordinate being an integer. What I cannot have is something out here because then my x coordinate is negative and I'm only considering the natural numbers. Right, we don't write solid lines or bars or fill it in because that would include all real numbers. We're not including the real numbers, we're just including natural numbers and integers. Does it make sense? I hope it makes sense. All right, let's look at this last one. All the xy's and the real squared, so that's the reals cross reals, this Cartesian product of the reals, where x squared plus y squared equals one. Okay, so that means that uh, x squared plus y squared has to satisfy one or less. Um, so let me think. If I put in the point negative one for x and zero for y, that will work, that will work. So I said negative one, zero, because that's negative one squared is one plus zero squared to get one, okay? Um, or less, so I think anything along here is gonna be okay. Uh, I could go out to one, zero and be okay. I think I could also do uh, zero, one, and uh, zero, negative one, I think will also satisfy uh, x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. And uh, so I got those four points. And uh, you know, I think anything along these axes will work. Um, any idea what this is going to look like? I'll give you a hint. If I take um, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, that will work because 1 over root 2 squared is 1 half. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. Um, that should or hopefully trigger something from trigonometry. And this is actually the unit circle. So actually this set is all of this stuff in the unit circle. Um, if you're not familiar with trig, that's okay. Uh, x squared plus y squared equals one is the algebraic equation of a circle with radius one. So if I say less than or equal to one, then I'm going to um, I get that circle, okay? Um, I get the disk, I get things less than that. Okay, now that's just part of what we're trying to do. That's this first set. If you notice, and it's hard to see because I wrote over it with this other example, but this is Cartesian product with zero, one. So now what I want to do is, uh, well, that's going to pop it into a third dimension. Uh, I think we're okay with that though. So we'll go like this. We'll go maybe give us a Z direction here, okay? So my X, Y, so here's x and y. That's going to be this circle that we just drew. And then the z direction, I want to go from, my z coordinate has to go from 0 to 1. I'm going to start out at 0. Here's 0. And I'm going to end up at 1. And when I get to height 1, I mean, anything that satisfies that circle in the x y direction is okay. So I end up with this cylinder here. So anything in that cylinder satisfies that set. In fact, that set is that cylinder, the geometric cylinder. Okay guys, I hope this makes sense. Power sets, Cartesian products are weird at first, but once you get them, they're actually pretty simple concepts, and man, they're so powerful. 
Guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. I'm excited about this stuff. I hope you are too. You can do it. It's just math. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care.